Hey there, D-News, I'm Trace, and we're gonna talk to Dr. Ian O'Neill down in LA about the Perseid meteor shower. Hey, Ian, how's it going? Hey, Trace, how's it going? Well, tell us a little bit about the Perseids. What are, the, what are, they, what are they for? How did they happen? Well, basically the Perseids are a meteor shower and it happens around this time every year. And it's basically when the Earth passes through the cloud of particles that were emitted from the comet Swift Tuttle. We keep seeing the same Perseid meteor shower year after year. Is this the only annual meteor shower? There are many showers actually throughout the year and we, we pass through quite a few clouds because there's a lot of comets out there that pass through the inner solar system and our Earth goes through their tails not just like the Perseus uh, meteor shower but my personal favorite the Geminids that actually happens around about December time. So where does it get these names? Perseids and then you mentioned the Geminids. Where, where does that come from? Well, basically, it's all connected to Greek mythology and, of course, the constellations. Basically, the uh, the Perseids are, they actually seem to emanate from the um, uh, Perseus constellation, which is a northern hemisphere constellation, so you can see it in a nice sky for the northern hemisphere. And basically, all the uh, meteors from the uh, Perseids appear to um, radiate, and it's called a radiant. So basically, they all appear to be shooting from that one part in the sky. So does this space debris eventually, after we go around and through it a bunch of times, is it gonna burn out? I mean, of course, uh, there's only a certain number of um, particles in this cloud, and some kind comets often disintegrate and die. I mean, there are some commentary, um, uh, commentary tales that we go through, these clouds of dust that gradually get eaten up over time and because the comets either died or it's one of these very long duration comets that have just flown through the inner solar system and been ejected out, it leaves its trace behind. So eventually the, the Earth and other planets will keep on going through this cloud, burning up all the particles and eventually, yeah, they will get depleted. You mentioned that Perseus is a northern hemisphere constellation. Does that mean the southern hemisphere won't get to spot this one? The, the constellation Perseus will be below the horizon if you're, say, in Australia or anywhere in the southern hemisphere. So it's very difficult to see any meteors. There will be the, uh, there will be a few that will probably, you can probably see the very, very bright ones that may come overhead from the horizon, uh, but it's very difficult in the southern hemisphere. So what's the best place and time to take a look at this Perseid meteor shower? Well, the date when the meteor shower actually peaks is going to be on the 12th and 13th. If you've got a clear sky, go out after midnight, because remember, you want to be in like the dawn phase of the night. Meteor spotting is the easiest form of astronomy because you just lie back, with your friends and try and count how many meteors you see per, per hour. And you may well see a lot, you may well not see very many. It depends on the density of the cloud that we're traveling through at that time. But this year we may be lucky, there could be a record number of meteors, we just do not know. So you don't need a telescope, you don't need binoculars, you can just lay down and spot them. You need no equipment apart from your eyes, so just make sure you get some good glasses out and uh, or your contact lenses in and just lie back and watch. Well, thanks a lot, Ian. Any other tips for meteor shower watching? Like if uh, it's a little cloudy, what can I do? Yes, yes, I had a great tip from our in-house astronomer, Mark Thompson. He's the BBC astronomer as well. When there's these ionization trails high in the atmosphere, uh, radio waves will bounce off of them. So what you need to do is try and find a radio station in a city that's around about a thousand kilometers away. So look at the map, find a city, find a radio station that's based in that city and tune in to the, the, the FM signal that they are transmitting on. And you should just hear static. But when a meteor strikes the atmosphere, these very distant radio waves bounce off of the ionization trail and you may well hear little pings and you may will suddenly hear the radio station come into focus and then disappear because that's basically the radio waves bouncing off the upper atmosphere and coming back down to your radio and you can actually do it. I think I'll be trying it this year because that's quite a fun little thing to do. Well thanks a lot for talking to us Ian and if you want to watch more D News make sure you keep coming back every single day twice a day or you can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Google Plus. That was Dr. Ian O'Neill. He's our resident space producer for DiscoveryNews.com. Thanks for watching D News everybody. Catch you later.